Well, the Trump administration is planning to punish Russia for supporting the Syrian regime and its use of chemical weapons. Officials are expected to impose new sanctions on Russia. They will target companies dealing with equipment related to the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad, and his chemical weapons stockpile. This comes after U.S., French and British airstrikes hit three sites related to chemical weapons in Syria over the weekend. Seth Doan visited one of the facilities. He's following the latest in Damascus. Since those airstrikes, the Syrian government has gone to great lengths to try to show that they did not have any real impact on the ground here. And the Syrian forces have made significant military advances since, specifically recapturing the town of Douma, which of course was the site of that purported April 7th chemical attack, which was the impetus behind those airstrikes. Over the weekend, we were able to make it to one of the sites that had been targeted, the Barza Research Facility here in Damascus. The Pentagon says it was key to the development of biological and chemical weapons here in Syria. But we met a scientist who told us he had worked there for 38 years. He gave us a tour of the smoldering ruins and told us that they were only developing pharmaceuticals and had nothing to do with chemical weapons. Were chemical weapons being developed here? That's totally incorrect, he said. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons visited here and did not report anything wrong with this place. We are seeing spin from all sides, but one thing is clear, that facility is completely destroyed. It's also clear that the airstrikes will not have an overall effect on this war. It is clear that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and his allies are winning this war, and Assad is already looking ahead. He, over the weekend, he told Russian lawmakers that $400 billion would be needed to rebuild Syria's economy. Seth Doan, CBS News, Damascus. For more on this now, we want to bring in terrorism analyst Van Hip. He's the chairman of the consulting firm American Defense International. He's also the author of The New Terrorism and served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army and Deputy General Counsel of the Navy. Thank you so much for joining us, Van. And Marie, great to be with you. So listen, um, were these airstrikes the right thing to do? Were they enough to cripple the Assad regime's use of chemical weapons? They were the right thing to do, uh, but uh, and I would say they only degraded it for a while. Uh, but I do think it was the right thing uh, for this president to show not only Assad that there are red lines that will not be crossed with this president, but here's something else, Anne-Marie, that really probably hasn't gotten much attention, but I think did play very much and in weigh into the president's calculus on making this decision, and that's Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un has been brought to the table uh, to discuss denuclearization that is historic, and he was watching what we did or didn't do here. So I, I, think, um, I think the president was also sending a message to Kim Jong-un, as well as Bashar Assad, that red lines will not be crossed with this president, and that was very important. So red lines will not be crossed, though there certainly seems to be uh, two very different narratives um, coming out, uh, or depending on who you listen to. Uh, we just heard from Sergei Lavrov. He has a completely different narrative. The Russians say, you know, there was no success here. This was not a case of mission accomplished. Uh, there are video reports showing Syrians out in the streets in Damascus after the strike celebrating their government. So, so what do you believe happened here? Is this mission accomplished? Well, I would not have used that phrase. And Anne-Marie, isn't it amazing that the foes of both Russia and Syria, they always tend to gas themselves or poison themselves. I mean, we've seen this movie so many times. The proof is there. Uh, 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 Carla Del Pont, the former uh, Attorney General of Switzerland, actually headed a, uh, a tribunal of the United Nations, and she said over a year ago that there's more than enough evidence to convict Assad of war crimes. There was also something called the Joint Investigative Mechanism. This was an outfit of the United Nations that went around documenting all the evidence of uh, violations of, um, uh, of international law, the use of chemical weapons. It was there, and lo and behold, Guess who voted the one uh, uh, outfit, the one country on the Security Council that uh, would not allow this body, the Joint Investigative Mechanism, to continue, that had the proof it was Russia. You know, last year when the president uh, gave the order to launch missiles after a similar chemical strike, uh, the strike was celebrated. But then, you know, in the aftermath, the discussion was about a follow-up strategy that, that the strike alone wasn't good enough. And these missile strikes, these most recent ones, shed very little light on President Trump's Syria policy. We know that the main goal of U.S. troops there is to defeat ISIS. <clears throat> but if Assad continues launching chemical weapons on his own people, 
the U.S. may be drawn further into an escalating conflict. So, you know, in, if you were to give advice to this administration, you know, how what would you say that this administration needs to do to address this this problem moving forward? Yeah, anyone who, who looks at the history of, of uh, Syria, Anne-Marie, will, will uh, come to, I think, understand that the phrase constant turmoil best describes it. It's a quagmire, and uh, we, we need to be very careful that our involvement does not escalate. I would propose a three-pronged strategy focused on Russia, focused on Iran, and focused on Assad, a strategy designed to divide them uh, and also to, uh, so that they would actually have to focus on their own problems. I would go after Assad as a war criminal, and there are things that we can do. Look at what Sweden and Germany are already doing right now to prosecute uh, Syrian uh, war uh, crimes in those countries, and even the Swiss government has gone after Rafat al-Assad, uh, Bashar al-Assad's uncle uh, and former vice president, Iran. Iran has also been the great enabler of the nuclear threat in North Korea. Uh, they've, got, they've got forces on the ground in Syria. I think that also weighed into the decision-making process. But so many of our Arab allies have had it with Iran. Uh, Eleven of them have gone to the United Nations and, and uh, come forward calling them a state sponsor of terrorism. And then Russia, they have been AWOL. They, there was a 2013, and, and Marie, a 2013 uh, Security Council agreement that all of these uh, chemical weapons manufacturing facilities were supposed to be destroyed. What happened to that? What happened to the monthly inspections? Uh, what happened to the reports? I would focus on that three-pronged strategy. Uh, if, if I were advising the president, I have a three-pronged strategy designed to, to, to divide uh, 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 and create friction among uh, uh, Putin, Assad, and Iran, and let each one have to focus on their own problems. Uh, Van Hib, uh, all uh, fascinating bits of advice. Uh, certainly the missile strike was the beginning and not the end of what's going to be taking place in Syria. Thank you so much. Great to be with you.